Hi, my name is Nana and welcome to my channel, A Puzzling Lamb. In today's video, I will show you all the puzzles I've acquired in November. It's not my December haul, as I accidentally said in my last video that this video would be. It's my November haul. I didn't discover that mistake until days after I posted the video. So yes, this is my November haul. And the main part of this haul, where I got most of my puzzles, was when I visited Denmark's only physical puzzle store, Puzzlespilsbutikken. Now, in Denmark, we have some puzzle web shops, which have a great selection of puzzles. Uh, Puzzlespilsbutikken obviously also has a web shop, which I think is the best puzzle web shop we have uh, with the taste of puzzles I have. But when it comes to physical stores, Bookshops often have a small selection of puzzles, but it's also often not really my style. It's mostly the very traditional kind of puzzles. And there are a few stores with a very decent selection of puzzles. I, I will get to some of those later. But when it comes to a store that is completely dedicated to puzzles, this is the only one we have, as far as I know, and I think I know. But... Unfortunately for me, the store is located basically on the other side of the country for me, which I know Denmark is a small country, so for a lot of you, that distant distance probably wouldn't be very much, but for me, it's a long way away. So I don't get to visit her store very often. This is, I believe, the third time I was there. And I just love this store, and that's just something very special about seeing all these puzzles in real life and not just ordering them online. So I'll show you some footage from my visit there. It's a very, very cozy little store, which is packed with puzzles. There are way more puzzles in there than you'd think when you see the size of it. And Bettina who owns the store, is very focused on stocking a lot of new, modern, exciting brands and a lot of the brands she has I can't find anywhere else in Denmark. So it's really my kind of puzzle store. Now, the first pile of puzzles I want to show you are puzzles from her own puzzle brand, Penny Puzzles. Now, she was very, very kind and gifted me all these puzzles so I could review them on Instagram and actually I am cheating a bit by showing these puzzles here because I was supposed to get all these puzzles while visiting her store but we were both too impatient and too excited so she ended up actually sending me the puzzles last month but I still decided to wait and show you them in this whole video since that was the plan from the beginning, and I think it just makes sense to show them while I talk about her store. So her brand is her own brand uh, that she created is called Penny Puzzles. And until now, Penny Puzzles have only been small 150 piece puzzles. I have some here. You can see these cute little puzzles here. But very recently she came out with the first 500 and 1000 piece penny puzzles. So let's take a closer look at them. The first one here is called Christmas Night and first let's just take a look at the box. I really like the design. I really like that you have the entire image on the front. Nothing is covering it up. I like that on the back you have a little description of the image, both in Danish and in English, and you have all the information you need. And there's also the Instagram handle of the artist. And I talked a bit about uh, that with her, and she said that it's very important for her to credit the artist. And I completely agree with that. I hate when puzzles 
uh, puzzle brands don't tell you who the artist it is. We wouldn't have any puzzles if it weren't for artists, so that's very important. And one thing I also think is really nice that she did is she numbered them all. And I like that it brings up the collector in me. Uh, you, It makes me want to have them all. And I have, thanks to her. So let's take a look at the image. It's a 500 piece puzzle and it's this Christmas scene. It This image is a bit more religious than I would normally choose for a Christmas puzzle. But I really think it's beautiful and I really like that it's not the traditional red and green colors that you see in a lot of Christmas puzzles, uh, but it's these blue cool tones. It's a Christmas image that I wouldn't feel too bad about doing in January or February or any time of the year because it doesn't scream Christmas. So I really like this one. And the box is nice and matte. It's the same texture that's on the pieces. Now the second one, and this, if I have one teeny tiny criticism of these puzzles, it's that you can see this is a 500 piece puzzle, and the next one is a 1000 piece puzzle. And it's the same size. So you know how I feel about the size of boxes. It could be smaller, the 500 piece boxes. Uh, boxes for the 500 piece puzzles but it's not ridiculously big and you do get a nice size Im image on the front to work from so i'm really not too mad about it i've seen way bigger boxes for 500 piece puzzles before so it's still a good size so yes on to the next one this is called mosaic studio and as i said a thousand piece puzzle I'm a bit more afraid of this image, but Bettina did say that it's actually not that difficult uh, when you get started. And this image is actually illustrated by Bettina herself, so that's really cool. And the next one, number three, Home of Hamlet. And I'm completely in love with this one, and it's all, it also sounds like this is by far her bestseller from, of these puzzles. So it's this really amazing illustration of Helsingør, the city that her store is located in, and it's just packed with details. So of course, uh, Kronborg Castle is here, and while I was here visiting her store, of course, I also took a walk around Kronborg. You just have to do that when you're in Helsingør. And you have a... you can just see Sweden over here and you really get a sense of the city with all these beautiful old houses and my favorite detail which she told me because I thought it would be but she told me that it she actually didn't ask the artist to include this detail so it was also a really nice surprise to her but as you can see here that is actually her puzzle stall I really think that's a fun detail and I'm really really looking forward to doing this puzzle and I actually think that I will do a YouTube review video of this brand and with this puzzle in particular. Um, I really love this, I'm really looking forward to it. The next one is this with Nyhavn, it's in Copenhagen. and. I really love this. I really love the colors. I think it's going to be really fun to sort out the different houses. And I actually also really like the sky. I like how a sky can often be a bit boring and very solid colored. But there's actually a bit of a gradient here. And there's some details with these birds and clouds <laughs> is what it's called. <laughs> clouds. And yeah, I, I really love this one. I must admit, there are none of all these puzzles I don't like. And I'm not saying that because she uh, gave them all to me. I really love all these images. And then this one, the second 500 piece puzzle, also a Christmas puzzle. 
and I love this image. I fell in love with it the moment she posted the first picture of it. So it shows the tradition, depicts the tradition of Santa Lucia, which I think it's the first parcel I've seen which depicts this tradition. It's a tradition I think started in Sweden, but we also celebrate it in Denmark. I actually don't quite know what other countries. Please let me know if you celebrate Santa Lucia. But it's a really, really beautiful image. And I have done this puzzle. It's the only one I've done so far. And I love, love, love the quality. In fact, and she also told me this, it's the same pieces as Travel puzzles. So if you love Travel puzzles, you'll love these. They're just nice matte pieces, no false fits, no paper backing. And it holds together really well. You can pick up sections, you can pick up the entire puzzle, but it's still easy to take apart without damaging. And just the matte, not exactly velvet touch, but really, really soft, uh, really lovely pieces, really, really lovely. And I must admit, if you have to compare Penny Puzzles with Travel Puzzles, I think I like her uh, images more. Uh, I also really love Travel's, Travel Puzzles, but it's not all their images that are for me. But so far, all Penny Puzzle images are for me. So I really love this one. I also, again, like... You know, it is green and red, which is, which is very Christmas, but it's also, and Santa Lucia, it's a tradition, uh, okay, this is awkward, 13th December, I believe it is, we celebrate it. So it obvious, obviously is a Christmas puzzle, but it's also very much just a winter puzzle when you look at uh, the colors. And it's also really filled with details, lots of animals hiding all around and love this one and the last one also a christmas puzzle this time a thousand piece christmas puzzle is this and again a christmas puzzle with a bit of a different color palette and this particular image she has actually already used on one of her 150 piece puzzles so i have that one too uh, so i think it's really exciting that she uh, used that for a thousand piece puzzle because as you can see they're just so many details in this that I think you'll see much more in a thousand piece puzzle than in the 150 piece. Oh, and it's called Christmas Ballet. But yes, so cute. And honestly, and I'm not saying this because she gave me these puzzles, I really, really love them. I did already put up a review on Instagram of this puzzle. So go check that out if you want to know in more detail what I think about these puzzles. And uh, as I said, next year I will do a YouTube video review of one of these puzzles. Now let's move on to all the puzzles I actually bought while at her store. So the first one... Actually, I didn't buy this one. She gifted this one to me also. I promised the rest of them I bought myself. But is this, again, a penny puzzle? One of the original 150-piece puzzles. And with this one, which is number three of these small ones, with this one, I now have all of them. So my collection is complete and I'm happy. And it's also just a really cute... Christmas image. So I really like that my collection is complete now. In fact, I think I'll just put it right here. Now, this, you can see those white, yeah. This is obviously not all of them. I think there's 14, 15, I don't quite remember. There are several more back there and hidden other places around my puzzle shelves, but I really love that my collection is complete now. Now, the rest I bought. So, the first ones are actually three puzzles. So, this is from the brand Professor Puzzle. And I've seen these puzzles around before. I haven't bought them until now. But it's these really cute 252-piece uh, puzzles disguised as books. 
and you can obviously buy them individually but she had this amazing little box set with three of them and it was a lot cheaper per parcel to buy them like this uh, than to buy them individually uh, with the prices I've seen other places. So I really love this. Let's take a closer look at one of them. So it's these um, really cute boxes that really do look like books. And then each parcel uh, is double-sided. So one side is a, a cover from a famous book. This is the Jungle Book. And then the other side think you can see it here is a page picture of a page from within the book I really like this concept and you can see here it opens up like this and then the pieces are in here uh, the ones in this box set is the jungle book uh, the wonderful Wizard of Oz and Alice's Adventures in Wonderland now of these three books Alice's Adventures in Wonderland is actually the only one I've read myself. But uh, of course, I know these stories and I just think it's so cute with puzzles that looks like book look like looks like books. Uh, I really love it. I actually have a few more here that that have also done it. You can see these ones and I I really like the concept I kind of feel like if all puzzle boxes just looked like books I would be really happy but I'm looking forward to trying these uh, and if I like them you can get I don't know really many different kinds with other books uh, the only thing now I've come to love smaller piece count puzzles but I still would really like if these were uh, if they made them with 500 pieces. I think that would be really nice. The next one I bought is this 500 pieces from Workshop. I've done uh, several puzzles from Workshop and I really like the quality. I haven't done a 500 piece puzzle from them yet, but I just love this illustration. I really think it's beautiful and I think it's going to be really fun to pick out all the different colors and textures. In this one uh, it's also one I could see myself hang on my wall if I had the room for it uh, but I really like it love it and I think I've talked about this before with puzzles that come in tubes because again as you know I hate boxes that are too big because it storage issues and obviously with uh, tubes also not the most practical thing to store but I completely forgive it because I just love uh, how it looks. And you can see I have some here from Cavallini & Co. Uh, I also have a workshop down here. And I actually also just like uh, how it breaks up, uh, how it looks on my parcel shelves. It kind of breaks things up, uh, makes it make it a big, bit more interesting. That was difficult for me to say. <laughs> But yes, love this one. And then I bought quite a few Christmas puzzles uh, while I was there. And the first one is this 500 piece puzzle from Gallison. Uh, again, uh, more on traditional Christmas colors, uh, more of a winter puzzle actually than a Christmas puzzle. But I really like this one. I really think it's cute. Uh, I have talked about before, I believe, how I love Gallison's images. I don't like their pieces um, very much. They're okay. Uh, I have a few issues with them. And one of them is that it's often just the two-in, two-out shape. But recently, <laughs> more and more of the puzzles I've seen from them are actually more varied in piece shape. And you can see this is two. I still see newly produced puzzles with only the two in two out shape but I'm hoping that this is a sign that they're moving away from that and starting to only make puzzles with uh, all different kinds of piece shape types uh, if they did that and if they got rid of their paper backing 
it would be one of my absolute favorite parcel brands but again not my favorite pieces but i still buy a lot of the parcels because the images are just amazing then a brand that i also have a lot of parcels from one of my favorites ebu and i love this image the moment i saw it i knew i had to have it i puzzles are my big passion <laughs> but christmas baubles are also i mean i either spent my money on puzzles or christmas baubles <laughs> so so this was really perfect for me and i especially love old vintage christmas baubles and I just love this image. It's is it is a thousand one thousand pieces. I do prefer my Christmas puzzles to be five hundred pieces, simply because November and December are usually very busy for me. So if I want to put together a lot of Christmas puzzles in that period, it's nice that they're five hundred pieces. But I love love this image, and actually, it does kind of remind me of how how our uh, christmas tree looks perhaps i think i have a video i can put it up here so you can get a sense of how i decorate my christmas tree i like the colors in this one uh, i like that it's simultaneously uh, very vintage in style with all these vintage looking bob uh, christmas bubbles but it's still very modern so love 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 this one now i did buy quite a few uh, new york puzzle company puzzles at her store she has a very uh, great collection of new york puzzle company puzzles in not a lot of other places in denmark you can find these puzzles uh, in the selection that she has so the first one, and I love New York Puzzle Company. I really, really do. Uh, this one, I of course had to have a 500 piece puzzle with a book cover from, I believe it says it's a ebook uh, of Hans Christian, Christian Andersen's fairy tales. That's very weird for me to say his name like that. In Denmark, we call him Jose Andersen, but I really love it with the Little Mermaid here. Perhaps it's going to be quite difficult down here, but it is only 500 pieces, so I'm not too worried. And I just, I really like this image. I really, really like it. And again, I like the colors and I know I'm going to love the quality of these. Now, still New York Puzzle Company. And once again, a Christmas puzzle, a 500 piece Christmas puzzle. Here with Harry Potter, uh, with this illustration uh, from the illustrator who made the book covers for the American books. I really love this one. And the next one, and I was so excited when I discovered that she saw that she had this puzzle. In fact, one thing that Bettina is very good at, uh, she has a Facebook group about her uh, store. And she often asks her uh, followers, uh, is that what it's called in Facebook, her followers, uh, about their opinions of, on puzzles, what we like in puzzles. And actually when she was producing, making, designing uh, her new penny puzzles, she was uh, very good at taking in our suggestions. She asked a lot of questions about what we like in images, if we like them to be portrait or landscape direction and all kinds of things but she had a post where she said that she was in the process of uh, ordering a lot of christmas puzzles for her store so she asked what we like in christmas images and one of the <laughs> puzzles i used as an example of a perfect christmas puzzle for me was this one and then just a few days later after i mentioned this i saw that she had it in her store got it in her store and obviously it wasn't because of me it was just a coincidence but of course i had to have it so it's a cover from a magazine called judge i don't know too much about it but 
uh, I just really like how it's Christmas, but it's really abstract. And I just think it's so fun. I don't quite know how fun it will be to put together. I think it'll be very difficult. It is a thousand pieces. I wouldn't have minded if it were only 500 pieces, but I really like this image. Now the last New York Puzzle Company uh, puzzle I bought is also a Christmas puzzle, also a thousand pieces. And it, it's this one with Peter Rabbit. And it's a very, very classic vintage Christmas image, uh, as you have seen from what I've shown you. I, usually, I am usually more into the modern Christmas images, but I like the modern or really vintage like this. And of course, Peter Rabbit, uh, my grandmother in my childhood, often told us the story of Peter Rabbit, so it's also really nostalgic for me, this image. So I really, really like this one. Now, for the last puzzle I got at her store, and I would say my favorite of all the ones I got from her store is this Wentworth puzzle. So she very recently started to sell Wentworth puzzles which is just great. There are not a lot of places in Denmark you can buy Wentworth puzzles. And she had a very nice selection of Christmas puzzles. And I really love this one, which again, <laughs> probably more of a winter image than a Christmas image. But still, I really think it's beautiful. I really, really like this artwork and the colors in it. And actually, this, uh, I told you in the last video, I had a special uh, plan for my last video for, uh, in the, for this year, which will be my next video. And it is to do a video of this puzzle and where I put it together in real time. Because the last time I did that, uh, I was worried that you would all think it was boring to watch me put together a puzzle in real time. But I had some really positive feedback on that video. So I knew I wanted to do it again, and when I saw she had Wentworth puzzles, I knew I had to get around and make a video with this. So it will be my, this will be my last video of the year, a little Christmas video where I put together this beautiful, beautiful Wentworth puzzle. And Wentworth is my favorite wooden puzzle brand. I have so many of their puzzles, just trying to count one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have ten now, plus a few of their uh, mini uh, puzzles. So uh, I'm so happy with this. Look, very looking forward to this one. So that was all the puzzles I got at her store. Now there are still some puzzles left in this haul because on this vacation where I visit her store. We also had a day in Copenhagen where I, of course, did a little bit of puzzle shopping. So the first store where I bought a puzzle in Copenhagen is called, and I really don't know how to pronounce it, Maduro, perhaps? I'll link it down below. Now, some time ago, a long time ago, I randomly discovered uh, that store online. Uh, they have a very, very, very small selection of puzzles. It really in no way is a puzzle store, but they have a few puzzles. And they have some that I've, that I've never seen anywhere else. So I bought one from them. I, so I knew I would have to visit that store while in Copenhagen. And I bought one puzzle. And it's this one from a brand I've never heard about before, never seen anywhere else. I believe it's a French brand quarter coins i don't know <laughs> perhaps please correct me <laughs> i'll put it up as always uh, here somewhere uh, but i really like this image it wasn't the cheapest puzzle but i took the chance uh, i always think it's fun uh, to try new brands uh, you can see here on the back some of the other ones this brand makes now at the store they also had this one, which I also really, really like. Then they also had 
This one, uh, if it wants in focus, this one. Uh, but I really like this one. If they had had that one, I probably would have bought that one. I, I definitely would have uh, considered buying that one. But I really think this is nice. like the colors. Uh, I think it's going to be really fun. It's a thousand pieces. Uh, it does seem like I haven't put it together yet. Uh, it does seem like it's good quality just looking at it through the back here all different kinds of shapes so pretty excited about this one uh, something really cool there's this little image inside but it's actually also a complete interview with the artist which i think is a really cool idea so i don't know if this is a puzzle anyone could be interested in uh, uh, in if I did a review of, uh, but uh, if any of you have heard about this brand, have tried this brand, please let me know what you uh, thought of it, uh, because I'm really excited to see. Then the next store I went to uh, is a bookstore called Arnold Busk. It was actually a pretty big chain of puzzle uh, of bookstores in Denmark. Unfortunately, they closed all their stores. I really, really like that uh, bookstore. Uh, but the only one they kept, I, th I think it the chain went banged up, but uh, they managed to save one of their stores, the original one in Copenhagen. And they actually have a pretty big selection of puzzles. Uh, I took some video, I'll show you. Uh, and what's... What I don't like about that store is that they now have no website uh, whatsoever, uh, no web shop. I can't buy any of the puzzles online. I can't even see what they have, uh, what puzzles they have uh, at home. Uh, so it's only when I'm actually in Copenhagen that I can uh, see what they have uh, of puzzles. And they have some really interesting ones usually. And I bought two. The first one is this one from Chronicle Books. I've tried a few from them, but this one, and again, you'll see, it looks like a book. I really, really like this concept. I think it's so cool. So the image is uh, an illustration of all kinds of uh, books that have, been, that have been banned at some point. So I really fell for this puzzle for a few different reasons. First off, I just think it's a really nice image. I think it'll be very fun to put together. Uh, again, I like the fact that it looks like a book. And I think it's a really interesting subject matter. Uh, and cool to put a bit of focus into banned books. Now, the concept of banning books is one I mostly, I mostly know about from America. Uh, it's not th something we really do in Denmark, as far as I know. But it's an awful practice and I really like that this puzzle uh, puts a bit of focus on that. And actually if you open it up, uh, there are all kinds of information here about uh, the practice of banning books. Uh, the pieces come in a paper bag. I really like that. And then one thing I think is really funny, really fun, is they've included this. With a list, first off, it's the image is here, and then it's basically a list of all the books in the puzzle where you can uh, check off, <laughs> write down uh, which of them you've read. So, I really think that's a fun idea. Looking forward to this puzzle, and please, puzzle companies make more puzzles that look where well, the boxes uh, look like books it uh, doesn't have to be the image doesn't have to be book related I just really really love it and the other one I bought uh, at that store is this one from Princeton Architectural Press I've done a few puzzles from them before so it's this I really like this one it's a bit weird <laughs> In a very good way. It's a bit weird. I really like the colors. 
I think it's one where I'll discover some really fun details uh, while putting it together. Uh, and actually this one was on sale, which was really great. Now the last place where I bought a puzzle in Copenhagen, oh it's heavy this one, uh, is at a store called Games. Uh, and Games, as the name suggests, is a store that sells a lot of games. Uh, but they also have a really large selection of puzzles. And I bought this 2000 piece pin tool puzzle. Now I love pin tool puzzles. I've never tried a 2000 piece one, but I really think this image is fun. It's called, must say somewhere. I'll put it up on screen as always. But I really think it's fun and I think it's a nice image for a 2000 piece puzzle because I think you can do a lot of sorting into these different planets which are actually the constellations, star signs, whatever you call it. Now I'm not personally into astrology uh, but I like the imagery that a lot of puzzles have that uh, depicts astrology. Now this and it's, uh, I know Pinto does this a lot, it's the first one I've come across. Uh, so the puzzles do come in two different bags. Uh, and as far as I believe, it is actually two sections. So you could just do two sections with 1000 pieces each. I am going to mix these two together when I do it. Uh, because when, I, I, when I'm putting together 2000 piece puzzle, I want to put together a 2000 piece puzzle and not two 1000 piece puzzles but I still think it's a good idea if you want to try uh, a puzzle with such a high piece count but it's a bit daunting now as far as I understand when they do this the puzzle cut is the exact same between these two uh, bags so you have to be a bit careful I think uh, with mixing the bags together if it's an image where uh, it could create a lot of false fits. But I don't think it will be a problem here. Um, perhaps a little bit in these dark sections, black sections. But there's still so many details that I think it will, it will be pretty obvious if a piece actually fits. So that was all the puzzles I bought in Copenhagen. We are now down to the last three puzzles of this haul and they are some very interesting ones and the first one is I think my favorite puzzle in this entire haul not because of the image but because of the brand and if you saw my latest community post here on YouTube you will have already seen it so it's this puzzle from Springbok a vintage Springbok puzzle and when I tell you I'm excited about this, it is an understatement. I am so, so excited about this puzzle. Now, Springback has, as far as I know, never been sold in Denmark. And I've never seen a Springback puzzle myself. And I have seen, especially Karen puzzles, all the interesting uh, vintage Springback puzzles uh, that she has. Uh, I've also just on Instagram and other places seen what kind of puzzles you lucky Americans find with Springbok from Springbok. Now, this one is from uh, 1977, I believe. The image, if we'll just take a look at that, not my favorite. I think it'll be fun, fun enough to put together. As you can see, the box is not in the best of conditions. The image on the box is quite discolored. You can get a sense of it down here, uh, how the color changes. And as you can see here, the box has been taped. Here it needs to be taped. Not in the best condition, uh, but I don't care. It's a vintage Springbok puzzle. Now, as you can see here with the pieces, I paid basically nothing for it too. So it is just amazing. There's a bag here with some loose pieces and then there's actually quite a lot of it that is still put together so i can really get a sense of the quality 
that a lot of people rave about with these vintage spring bug. You can see how well it holds together. And you can also see perhaps if we compare here, I really need to tape up this box, the color, perhaps you can see it's much more saturated on the uh, the pieces. Is But I'm so, so excited about this. Uh, if you guys would like to see it, perhaps I'll do a YouTube video about it, about my first vintage spring buck experience. I am beyond excited about this. It just, I would say, made my day. It more than made my day. I'm still completely high from finding this puzzle. I have mentioned to my family before, if you ever come across a vintage springbok puzzle, buy it, no matter the image. Again, it's not my favorite image. I've seen uh, images of some really amazing images from springbok, but I still think it's going to be fun. It's not just a boring landscape. It's actually filled with details. So even though it's a photograph and I like illustrations more, I really think it's going to be fun to put together. And just the fact that I now own a vintage Springbok puzzle. I can't express. I'm so amazed. The next puzzle is also a really interesting one for completely different reasons. So it's this 500 piece uh, Christmas puzzle. And it's not from a puzzle brand as such. It's um, made by Julemarke Hjemne. So it's the image is this uh, of this Christmas post postage stamp sheet that uh, comes out every year, a new one every year. This one is from this year, uh, and it's made by Julemarke Hjemne <laughs> Christmas Postage Stamp Homes, which is an organization that uh, helps children. Uh, with low self-esteem and other kinds of problems. In fact, the Danish Christmas stamps uh, were the first uh, Christmas stamp ever in history. And right from the beginning, uh, the money went to children in need. Uh, the kind of need has changed throughout the years, uh, but they still help a lot of children. And last year, I believe, as far as I can tell, was the first year that they've made this Christmas postage stamp sheet into a parcel, a 500 piece parcel. So I bought the one last year, I bought this one from this year, so now it's a tradition. Now they just have to keep making these. I think it's a great idea. I know uh, they've been struggling, I believe, uh, because, you know, people don't send letters anymore. Is uh, so the sale of these postage stamps stamps have gone down, I believe. So they've come up with different kinds of products, and I really like this one. And I can see that my camera is starting to tip. <laughs> one moment, I'm back. I hope that's better. But yes, I really think it's a great idea. Uh, I think it's a great idea that they uh, have chosen 500 piece puzzles because, as you can see. The image is quite difficult because, as always with these, uh, the image is mirrored more or less. Uh, you can see here how each of these is a stamp. That when you buy the sheet, you can divide it into these stamps. But I love this idea. I love supporting Julemarke uh, Hjemne, and I think it's a very a very interesting subject for puzzle image and I just hope they keep making these. Now the very last puzzle in this haul. Again, very exciting puzzles. I wouldn't buy any puzzles that I don't think are exciting. But it is the Pinsu Christmas Advent Calendar. Now, I love Christmas. As you can see from all my Christmas puzzles, I love Advent Calendars and I really, really love Pinsu puzzles. And again, there's a theme, uh, I think, in this uh, puzzle haul, and it's puzzle boxes that looks like books. So as you can see here, it's this book that you can open up, and then 
you punch out uh, each day. I can forgive them that because I don't think the price is too bad for, bad for this puzzle. Uh, when you consider its uh, pa uh, plastic pieces, its pinsu, but also just in general with pinsu puzzle, I don't think the concept is that you uh, put the puzzles together, take them apart, put them together again. You know, it's not you you're not supposed to do them again and again. Uh, the uh, normal 2D puzzles, uh, I think they call them showpiece, you know, they hold together so well, you're meant to hang them up on your wall. And I have a feeling that it's the same thing with this. You get some 3D puzzles, I believe, and uh, some other uh, 2D puzzles, and I, I just don't think they're made uh, with the idea that you can put them uh, back uh, together again uh, year after year after year. So they're forgiven if they make one last year. If I love this one and they make one last n next year, I will probably buy it. One thing uh, I also like <laughs> is that there's supposed to be a kind of story uh, that you follow along with. Also, there's a, a code here you can scan and there's supposed to be a whole story. And it's just very exciting. Uh, I've seen other... Uh, youtubers review this one and i've purposely looked away i haven't seen any of it because i want to be surprised myself but love the packaging i know i love the quality uh, so it's just exciting what the story is and what the puzzles are now if you want to get this one uh, and you're in europe there's the uh, where i bought it a website called puzzler I'll link it down below. It's a Danish website, but she sends uh, to all of Europe, I believe. It's the place in Europe to get Pintu puzzles, in my opinion. It's only Pintu puzzles uh, in that store, so I'm really, really, uh, I would really recommend you buy, uh, buying from that store. But of course, there are probably all kinds of places you can get this one, but I'll link that down below. And I can see. My camera is starting to, to tip again. I don't know uh, what has went wrong there. So I'll just quickly say that I hope you enjoyed this video. Once again, if there are anything you'd like to see a video about, as I, uh, please let me know. As I said, my next video will be the uh, Wentworth puzzle. And I know I'll do a video about the penny puzzles. Perhaps the Springbok one, if you're all interested. But let me know. And before my camera falls down completely, I'll say, please leave a like and consider subscribing if you like this video. See you next time.